everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Bright Side of Life. You know me, I am your host, Melissa Bright, and today I have the absolute pleasure of having Kristen Butler on this podcast. She is the founder and owner of Power of Positivity, which is a brand that celebrates the lifestyle of positive thinking and attitude, and she has, in the last 12 years, grown this brand to over 50 million in her community. And I just could not wait to have her on the podcast because our, our brands kind of have the same idea with the bright side of life, power of positivity. Um, so we're going to be talking all about positivity today and for times in our life that we really need to have that in our back pocket. So without further ado, Kristen, welcome to the bright side of life. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me, Melissa. I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing wonderful. I really, really want to start, you know, I know a little bit of your story, but I don't know all of it. Um, I kind of want to start to paint a picture for my listeners of, you know, why does power of positivity even exist? Where have you been before to get to where you are today? Because it's very easy to just say, oh, 50 million you know, followers and all that fun stuff. I know it's been a lot of work, but more importantly, a lot of inner work. So what is, what is your backstory with that? Yeah. A lot of people assume that, oh, she's just had a lucky life. Um, she's probably always been positive. Look at her. It's easy for her to be positive. But actually, uh, most of my life has been filled with turmoil and struggle. And so it's only been really the last decade and a half that I've been really implementing living a positive lifestyle and it's completely transformed and just being super intentional about that. So a decade and a half ago, I was at rock bottom. I was in bed for two weeks straight. Every area of my life was falling apart. I had just lost my business. I had a thriving eBay store. I was a power seller. Um, and back then eBay was like Amazon is today and they completely shut it down. I was obese. Uh, you know, my relationships were crumbling and I literally physically, I had burnt myself out so much trying to make my business thrive and make things work for me that I couldn't even get out of bed. I just wanted to give up. I thought that I had failed too much, that um, I just was a wasted space. And at that time, I completely hated myself. I, I was disappointed in what happened. And so I wanted to give up. I either ha I could either give up or I could try something new. And before that, I was always hustling, always pushing myself out of my comfort zone, you know, being a people pleaser. Also, I was just always um, looking outward. Right. And I wasn't really caring for the internal. And so that kind of landed me in that place. I wasn't really walking my own path and following um, my purpose, I was just trying to make ends meet. And I knew I had big dreams in my heart. I didn't really know what that was, but I was just trying to make things happen. So it wasn't until I had a moment where um, I had been um, called in to the hospital for my um, you know, suicidal thoughts at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was admitted and they let me go, but they said that, Hey, you have to see a therapist. So I did. And walking into that room um, was really healing for me because she mm -hmm. literally said, you know, Kristen, you need to be yourself more. You need to, you know, you're kind of like Marilyn from the Munsters. I don't know if you've ever heard of that show <laughs> um, where Marilyn I've heard of like, it. <laughs> She's like the positive one and the rest are like monsters, right? And so oh, she wow. thought she needed to change herself and they were telling her she needed to change herself. And so it was really, I felt seen in that moment. I felt like, wow, you know, I should just be myself. Someone's telling me to be myself. Wow. I just thought that I should kind of follow what people were telling me. And I kind of let that be my behavior on default without realizing it. And so from then on, I kind of listened, what do I need in this moment? And so I started making positive lifestyle habits and choices. And it really started to transform every area of my life then. And a few years 
fast forward, my life had really started to transform. And that's when I started the Power Positivity Community. It was just really to kind of help other people who were where I was at one time, but then also keep myself accountable for these new positive lifestyle habits. I just wanted a community where we could talk about these things because in my world, there really wasn't um, this positive community where you could at the time, you know, a decade and a half ago, well, it was probably I think 14 years ago, mm-hmm. it really wasn't very many positive communities where you could talk about this kind of stuff and inspire mm-hmm. each other, right? Mm-hmm. That is incredible. And I'm so happy that that we started there because, you know, sometimes when we just like I said, I just blurted out a sentence of, you know, the the presence that you have online. And I want people to know like where you started so they don't feel so far removed from your story and like they can't relate to you at all. And I now know because maybe a couple years ago, I would have felt that way. Like I can't have Kristen Butler on my, like, I am not even worthy to like be in her presence, but I, I don't want to do that. I want like, that's where self love starts is knowing that you are worthy of any dream that you aspire to want or, you know, create or whatever. Um, so thank you very much for painting that picture. Now, something that I really, really like about your power of positivity is we are very much in the same. I am such like a science nerd because as much as I want to hear, like, you know, do positive thinking or shift your mindset. I really need some hard, cold facts to like back up why I'm going to do all this damn work on healing. (laughs) So this might be a loaded question, but can I ask you what maybe has been your most profound research to really help in either your healing journey or a self-care practice, anything that just really stands out to you? And sorry to like throw a research. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, you know, statistic, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we love um, making sure that all of our articles are backed by science. So I love that you love that too, because you know, experience is great, but that hardcore fact of what is going on in our brains and what is going on in our bodies is so important. And one is not quite standing out to me, um, but the fact that there is so much research on positive thinking and what it does to our brains and literally how different neuro, um, you know, (laughs) what is it? Neuro, neurons. Transmitters or neurons or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you, it's not like something that happens overnight. As you begin to build a practice of, you know, gratitude or affirmations, the right neurons start to sync together and build the new pathways. So literally you could have a different brain in a year than you had before. So at first it might seem harder to do, but just like anything with more practice, the more neurons are linking together and literally making your brain feel more positive. And so it's going to look for more positive things. So it's just something that you build upon and you can literally become a different person than you were last year just by changing a few habits. And it doesn't even take a lot of time. Like gratitude can be a few minutes in the morning or affirmations can just be a few minutes or a few minutes throughout your day. And not only does it make you feel better in that moment, but then it's changing your brain And by doing that, you're literally going in the direction that you want to. Yes. And I love that you gave that example of, because that's why I've started my my meditation practice is because of all the science of how, you know, new neural pathways are being created. Um, You're releasing all kinds of the good chemicals that you're supposed to. It slows down. I just found out on Friday, like literally slows down brain deterioration, all this great stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, I think I can spare 20 minutes um, of my morning or night to meditate. Um, So something else that I told you before we got started, and I don't, whoever follows me on social media might know this, but I recently had my car stolen. Um, I'm on day four of still not having it found or located, what have you. And I am very glad where I am, where I am in my life now, in terms of if this would have happened a couple of years ago, I really, really would have been like, this would have knocked me way down. 
Um, when I first found out, I was extremely calm. Um, didn't even cry for like the first hour. I didn't go into why me, so on and so forth, which to me shows me just my um, growth that I've came from, you know, a couple years ago. But what I'm really trying to point out is there's a lot of things that could have happened when my car was stolen. One, I could have been in it. Two, I know the violence that also happens with these cars getting stolen. And if I would have seen it or something, I could have potentially been harmed. Anybody else that was with me could have been harmed. So I really am trying to like revert to the, the silver lining, the gratitude of what it could be. I'm so happy that it's my car and not my, my life, you know? So can you talk a little bit about why having maybe this, this practice, whether, you know, people call it, you call it obviously the power of positivity, the, the gratitude practice, so on and so forth. Like, why is this important during such trying times? Yeah. You know, I do want to say first that I think it's okay for you. I really believe in like feeling those feelings, but just moving through them, right? Like knowing yeah. like, okay, that is frustrating that that happened because that's really not fair. But then having the hope of knowing like something will come out of this, either, you know, they do find it, or if they don't, something good is going to come out of that. Knowing that there is hope that whatever happens um, is meant to happen and that something will come out of that. And then feeling through that, but not taking it to a level that it brings you down and like, you know, it can paralyze you. Right. Cause I'm all about like feeling them, yes. acknowledging them and moving through them. Yes. But I, I do believe that when we can attach to a, a better outcome or know that something better will come, that it does. Because even in my own thinking, when I would attach to the problem and feel like, Oh, there's not a solution. I had very little solutions. So if we can keep our mind open to the opportunity or the possibility of an opportunity, that can make us not only feel better in the moment, but then potentially even attract a better opportunity. However yeah. that looks like, it's like life's like, okay, you left that door open. Here it is, you know? Um, but if we close all the doors, you know, so, yeah. um, but I also feel like something like that, which is just huge. That's your car that can really bring you down. Like that can like take you out almost sometimes like for a couple of days. Right. So yeah. that's amazing that you can see that personal growth because it just makes such a huge difference. Yeah. And I love that you pointed out, you know, it, I, this is where I'm at in my point of my, my growing journey is I am so aware of the power of attracting what you want. Like literally I've asked myself, what did I do to attract my car being stolen? Because I'm such of the mindset of like, you're going to attract like the energy that, that you're putting out. So I'm trying not to beat myself up to be like, how did you manifest getting your, your car stolen? But I also want to point out is you're so right. I, of course my car was stolen. My means of transportation to get to anywhere is, is gone. And that is a crappy situation, no matter how you look at it. So I love that you point out that I absolutely am entitled to feeling frustrated because 10 out of 10 humans would feel the exact same thing. I definitely cried it out. I laid in my bed for a little bit, just like cuddling with my puppy dog. Um, so just kind of like you said, I don't want people to think that we're not supposed to just not like, just be positive about it and just do that. You do have to work through those emotions. Her, the biggest thing you're saying, Kristen, is just not letting it take you down for, for so long or letting them have so much power over you um, for whatever that looks like. If I wanted to stay in bed all day, then so be it. I could have stayed in bed all day and, and been sad or whatever. Uh, but I think that's really important to point out like you just did, you know, it's okay to go through those emotions and feel everything you need to feel. <laughs> it's almost like setting a healthy boundary. Like, no, that is not okay. But I know that there's going to be some kind of opportunity. It could come back or maybe I'm meant to have this car or I don't, I'm not sure what lies ahead for you. Um, yeah. but I know like I hadn't had my car stolen, but I had my, well, I had lost my wallet at Disney and, um, 
you know, my friend was like, nope, it's going to be gone. Like no one would turn that in. You have money in there. You have cards, you have everything. Like no one's going to turn that in. And I was like, okay, I have that perspective that I could choose, or I could choose that maybe there's a good person that would return it. And, you know, for me, someone did turn it in. And for you, that could mean that, but, but if I didn't, open up that that could be a possibility. I feel like I wouldn't have ever got it, you know, because yeah. I wouldn't even have went looking for it. Yep. So hopefully in your situation, it's found, or if it's not, something comes out of that, that is positive, right? At least mm -hmm. we want that opportunity and we might not feel it in the moment or even right after, but even a few years down the road, we could look back and say, wow, I'm glad that that happened because if it didn't this, you know, I didn't have the awareness for this situation. It's yeah. interesting what that positive could be, but when we allow that perspective to develop, it, it usually does. It, it's not always it immediate, but it can. Okay, so I have to add more to this story, which I can't even believe I'm going to say something about it, but I'm going to. So in all of this, there is already a silver lining, which I cannot believe. But through me getting my car stolen, it has actually put me in contact with somebody that I am now going on a, a date with that <laughs> saw my post on social media and we just happened to start talking and one thing led to another. And I'm like... I literally, <laughs> now it's the joke of like, somebody asked for my pl license plate number instead of my uh, phone number. And I'm like, there's a first for everything. So that's the silver lining right now. I just yeah, have to go with it because. For sure. Oh my gosh. That is so but, cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it is cool. And obviously, you know, maybe bigger thing, whatever it is, if it's a new car or whatever, but I you just sometimes have to like laugh at these situations and these silver linings. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. So something you have just recently came out with a, with a book, you have two books. I know you have your positivity journal that you came out with, but recently you just came out with a book called the comfort zone. And I really want to dive in deep with this because you have a whole concept of comfort zone that is not what we are used to ever, ever hearing about in our, in our existence. So tell us a little bit about your book and what does the comfort zone, your comfort zone mean to you and for everybody? So currently the comfort zone is not a comfortable place. And so I'm all about taking words to the next level. And if we want to live a positive lifestyle, then we have to look at the word choices that we're using. And it never really resonated with me that we should step out of our comfort zone. But when I was a child, that was something that was told to me often, you know, mm -hmm. Um, success is not found in a comfort zone or no pain, no gain. Or if you want to grow, you have to be out of your comfort zone. And so I lived by that adage and that adage took me to success, but then also burnout. And so it wasn't a very balanced place to live. And I was someone that took that uh, advice to its limits. And so as I began to heal my life by prioritizing things that were comfortable to me after rock bottom and things that resonated with me and things that felt good and harnessing my skill set, I, I started to realize like, wow, I'm not stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm taking things from a safe place and I'm expanding them. And so at first I kind of felt shameful for living in this way that was so against what society said success looked like, because I was someone that wanted to be successful. And so it wasn't until about eight or nine years ago when I was attending a writer's workshop where mm -hmm. Wayne Dyer said, you know, your story is your book or your book is your story. And I thought, you know, wow, that my story is really shameful. Like, I'm not sharing my story. That's not my book, right? <laughs> no, um, thank you. <laughs> like telling people they should be in their comfort zone and expand from that place. Like that's not going to resonate with people. And I even had shared it with um, a writer, writer friend that I knew that had had several books. And she even said like, that's a horrible idea. Like that's not even true. And I thought, well, it worked for me, but then it kind of gave me motivation because I'm like, well, let me really look at studies and research and see like how I can make this work for other people. And surprisingly, I realized that a lot of successful, fulfilled people 
are in their comfort zone and they don't even realize it and they're expanding their comfort zone. And so I decided to start writing the book and the last two or three years, I really put so much into it and started working with Hay House as my publisher and they love the idea. And, and yeah, so my version of the comfort zone is a place where it's not where you're, so sorry. There's it's okay. Going on it's, okay. Um, it's not a place of inaction and um, no motivation. It's a place where you're taking action, but you're also taking time for rest. Yeah. It's a very balanced place. And oh. it really works because there's so many people today that are so stressed out and they're, they think that stress is just a normal part of life and that it's a sign that you are um, going towards success or that you are growing and that failure is a sign of success. You know, the more failure you have, the more success yeah. you'll get, people say. And that's really not an accurate gauge. But someone like me, I thought like, OK, this is part of it. Right. And so I want to not only redefine our comfort zones, but tell people to get in them and then expand. So that's what the mm. book is about. I love this. And first of all, I'm going to tell you, I am getting your book because I told you about the little diagram that you have that you posted on social media. It just had so many different things. Like it, sh it said, I think, um, you know, you're, you're in your comfort zone when you're in your tuition, um, and an alignment and all these different things. And once again, I am such a person that is like, go by the book, follow society. This is what they say. I have to step out of my comfort zone. I have to stress myself out to the max. I have to be anxiety ridden doing this because that's what my body is going to do. And literally when I saw that page, it was like, she just gave me permission that that's not the way that I have to do what I'm doing in my life. You know, I have big dreams for my podcast and other things. And that doesn't, I told you the story before we got on here of for two weeks in 2021, my body was, oh my God, I like, it is the worst time to like think about because it was just two weeks of physical pain of anxiety because there was such an internal struggle of like, I guess, am I worthy to even be like doing this successful podcast, all this crazy stuff. So anytime I wanted to go and do something that was going to catapult me into furthering my vision just came with copious amounts of stress. And now Kristen, you're telling me that doesn't have to be <laughs> that way at all. And that is really, really like beyond relieving to me. Yeah. You know, stress is not the measure of growth. And in the book I talk about, you can do uncomfortable things in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even share, you know, you can skydive, you can run a marathon, whatever it is that you want to do. And that's the key. If it's something you want to do, then there's ways that you can make it that you can expand into it or attract it into your comfort zone. And so you can think of it either way, but it's really about being comfortable with more things. And yes, self-love is totally a part of that. You have to feel worthy enough. And so I'm not about um, going ahead with something. If you're like really not feeling like it's the next right step or that you're worthy, because oftentimes we might jump ahead and think that it's the right thing to do, but then it's, we feel unworthy. And so the outcome isn't always um, what we would like it to be. Right. Yeah. So self-love, self-care, you want to kind of fill your cup up and nourish yourself and come from a place of like safety and, and confidence and then move forward. And of course, we're not going to always be a hundred percent confident or feel ready. But in the right. book, I talk about, um, acclimation. It's really the stages of growth. And so when we want to, to make something part of our comfort zone, sure, at first we might feel a little unfamiliar or a little uncomfortable. That's phase one. But it's something we want to do. It's something that we feel drawn to. And so it's okay to do that. We don't want to do something where someone's telling us we want to do it or we should do it or that's the next step we need to take. It has to feel very intuitive, like you're drawn to it. And so, and so 
Next, you want to feel familiar with it and maybe still a little uncomfortable because it's new. And with practice, you're going to eventually feel familiar and comfortable with it. That's when it's in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of think of life in these three phases of growth, then we can kind of gauge where we are. Most people, though, spend their time in the unfamiliar, uncomfortable and think that that's a sign of progress. And then they burn themselves out and aren't really feeling very happy. But it's no wonder because they're just always in this unfamiliar, uncomfortable place. That is so true. So you said there were there were three stages and I'm sorry, I'm testing you on your own book. Yes. You said the first one was the unfamiliar was and uncomfortable, yes. but you're drawn oh. to do it. So it's not something that someone's telling you like yeah. you should do that. And then you yeah. just do it because yeah. you have to feel good to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you want a right, the right outcome and then with a little bit of time, and in the book, I talk about dancing. My husband and I, we um, took dance lessons and he, I love dancing. And he was like, I don't, I'm not really into dancing, <laughs> but he wanted to do it because I liked it. And he thought, you know, let me try this. This is something that I want to do. And at first, like the moves together felt unfamiliar and uncomfortable, right? <laughs> right. But it didn't take long for us to start feeling familiar with it because we, you know, we just took a lesson or two and we're like, wow, you know, we could probably do this. And then it started to feel familiar and comfortable. Sure. We weren't like, um, amazing dancers, like dancing, that you with, see the on dancing with the stars. <laughs> right. I mean, we have to put it into perspective. Right. But it was something that we're like, Hey, we can do this. And so you want to get to that third phase in something. And it can take time depending on what it is that you're doing, but you just don't want to do something where you're like, I hate this. I don't want to do it. I don't like this. Maybe eventually I will. Because oftentimes it's normally not the right direction that you should be in. And mm -hmm. you want to come from a place that feels good first and then take the step. Oh, yes, you are so right. So two things. It's so funny that you are talking about dancing because I just started like doing my workout again, pick that back up. And I am told myself if I don't want to burn myself out, why am I going to go necessarily do exercises that I don't want to do? I have always loved dancing. But I can't dance that well. I'm not going to lie. But who doesn't like dancing to either hip hop or apparently I like Latin now. Me too. <laughs> so I like have these workouts and I'm like, I might look like a fool, but I am having so much fun. Who cares? But it is uncomfortable for me because I think like, oh God, everybody in the world can see me right now looking crazy. But no, but I'm like, I'm going to stick to this. And now I've been doing it for like two weeks, just dancing to whatever I want and working out and having fun. And so I love that you give, you know, that dancing analogy. I love that. See, perfect alignment there. Yeah. yeah I mean, I love dancing. And to me, that's a great workout. You have to love what you're doing. And then you'll get, you'll really get the results from it because you're enjoying yourself. You don't want to have those anxious or uncomfortable feelings like, oh, or I don't want to do this because then you're not getting the full like experience of it. And you're yeah. not having fun. Fun is everything. Exactly. And something that, you know, I can't remember what book it is with about manifesting or being in alignment, but you know, I I've told somebody recently that my podcast is one of the biggest things that bring me joy in my life because I so much love having deep conversations or what thought leaders, visionaries. I'm like, I want to have conversations with these people. When I started my podcast in 2020, I never thought I would have some of the people that are on my podcast today. There was many comfortable nights that I did not. I'm like, I can't email this person. Why are they even going to talk? What are they going to? And now I've went from that uncomfortable to now I'm like, I deserve, like I can talk to these people and I, what, what is wrong with that? So now I feel like I'm in that comfort zone of <laughs> just try it, Melissa. And if it's no, or they don't answer, that's, okay too, but you, you have to try it. And I feel like now I am in the flow with that. And I know that I feel aligned with what I'm supposed to be doing. I love that. And you're, you're, what you're saying is what I heard is that like self-esteem is just so much a part of that. And I talk about that in my book, like self-esteem and self-trust 
are in your comfort zone. You want to harness that. You don't want to step out of that power Mm -hmm. and not have that as part of like your toolbox when you're like doing whatever it is you're doing. Right. And like flow is like the center of your comfort zone. So that's when you like know what you're doing and it feels good and you could spend hours doing it. Right. And the growth is like the edge of your comfort zone. That's kind of like where you're expanding like a rubber band and kind of making more things comfortable. So you don't know it always be at the edge, you know, you want to go in the middle and go on the edge and kind of keep expanding it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Do, something that I, I cannot help but notice is, you know, I've been on the healing journey, the same, uh, same amount of time that I've had my podcast, literally therapy and my podcast started within two weeks of each other. And every new tip, tool, modality, exercise that I discover because there's so many out there and there's all kinds of different healing recipes. I I can't help but to see like, okay, Melissa, if you are just trusting the process, you will see that you had to know this or try this exercise or learn this tip or start meditating or anything to be able to go to the next place you want in your life. So have you found that for like your, your own journey in terms of healing? Like we kind of want to put the cart before the horse, but yet maybe there's something that we still need to learn or grow or, or something. Have you found that for yours? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like the more things that we try and we're guided, right. To like, you were guided to trying meditation and that's going to open more doors, right. Um, in the comfort zone, I talk about, I love that you said this, the expand itself. So that's like dreaming about like who that next level version of you is that you're like wanting. And, you know, some people, um, well, for everyone, it's different really. But when you kind of visualize that expanded self of you, you're like, okay, what is this person doing? What do they wear? Where do they live? Um, you know, you can ask yourself all these fun questions and you get to answer them. And when you answer them, it's like, okay, well, what are the habits? And you're going to have some next level habits also. And so you can kind of bring that into today and start practicing to get to that next level. And it really does work. That's the funnest part about it is that when you adopt those habits and they become part of you, you become that next level version of yourself. Yeah, that is so true. Do you, do you feel like this is something that I'm currently struggling with like right now? And it, I'm such a reflective person that I'm not financially where I want to be. And I've like beat myself up a lot around that, but I'm like, I don't come from an entrepreneurial background at all. I actually come from a very low income family that I'm like, I'm only technically like two years in on any kind of adventures. One, I figured out that I struggled with even being worthy, you know, those limiting beliefs of being like, why am I even going to try this? I'm just supposed to struggle. My family did. That's all I'm going to do. Did you, have you ever struggled with that part of like almost like fear of success or fear of the next level that Kristen was required to be if she wanted to, to be here? And if so, what were some of the, some of the things that you did <laughs> to yeah, combat absolutely. that? <laughs> yeah. I, I even share like, not to keep referencing my book, but I even no, share about like, my poverty journey. Like I was born into poverty. And, you know, I had like an entrepreneurial spirit, but I never knew exactly what I was supposed to do. And I've tried all these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it only led me to here. Right. So, um, I totally understand that. And I think acknowledging what those limiting beliefs are and getting them down on paper and letting Mm -hmm. them know that that is not you. These are labels that you've picked up over the years from other people. Mm -hmm. And so you can redefine your beliefs around anything. So for example, money, when you write that down on paper and say, well, what do I want to feel? How do I want to believe? And then write that affirmation and just make sure it's something that feels attainable. So if it's something like you don't want to necessarily say like, I want to be a millionaire if that doesn't feel right to you. (laughs) So you bridge that and you just say, you know, I want to pay all of my bills on time or I want to save X amount of money or have this amount of money for a vacation. So you can kind of start to, and if you acknowledge, if you acknowledge a limiting belief, like I'm not worthy of this much or, um, whatever it was that you said around your limiting beliefs. Yeah. Just 
go within and feel like, how can I counter this? How do I, what do I want to feel? Cause I don't like feeling like this and I do right now, but I don't have to. And that's the fun part. We can mm. make our own affirmations and bridge them. The importance is just making it feel like it's the next right step, that it's not too far out of your comfort zone, that it's right on that edge, that it feels attainable. And then you, as soon as you feel like you have embodied that, make the next one. Mm -hmm. And I'm really big on doing the same ones every day, because if that's what you're trying to change, you don't want to just do a bunch of random ones every mm -hmm. day or like one, that, a different one every day. Because right. how is that really ingraining the repetition is just yeah. so important. So yeah. um, you can change limiting beliefs around money with affirmations because we all have affirmations, whether mm -hmm. we're like intentionally creating them, but we can intentionally change them and create them if we give ourselves that space to do so. Yeah, that is so true. And I think where my sh like it's that it's the limiting beliefs, which I, you know, I've done a lot of work on this. But now it's like, I need the results to prove that that work has paid off. Like the affirmation work, the manifestation work, all this work, the healing work, getting rid of the, like, when is it, when is that going to reflect what I've been doing? And I know that's like, can be a long journey. Like nobody's going to say, oh, you're going to make this amount of money when you only do this for this. I know that, but I guess it's just something that I have to work on. You know, of course we all want that guarantee. Like if you go down this path, it's going to work out for sure. And I guess where I get tripped up is I'm like, are you for sure? If I go down this path, it's going to work for me. Cause I don't want to go all the way 10 miles that way and find out I went the wrong. I feel like if it feels good, like if that feels right, just keep taking those steps and then watch for the action steps that are like the opportunity action steps that are presented to you okay. and keep that self-esteem up knowing that, Hey, I can walk through that door. Like for example, I, my first book, I published Amazon KDP and I was like, I'm just going to try it out, get into the publishing industry and see if this is for me. I've always wanted to be a writer and I always wanted to write books. So let's just try it out. And, um, interestingly enough, I published my first book, which was um, three minute positivity journal on Amazon KDP. And a few months later, I was asked if I wanted to talk to Hay House. I didn't even like force that. It was just an opportunity that came to me. Now I could have said like, wow, that's a lot. I mean, am I good enough for that? You know, but it was the right timing for me that I was like, let me just have a conversation with them and see what they say. Mm -hmm. And so if I break it down into smaller steps, like well, Kristen, you don't have to commit. It's just, you're just having a conversation. So sometimes if something feels so big, like, okay, here's an action step I can take that can give me that financial abundance or that can give me that opportunity to write a book or whatever it is for someone. Yeah. Um, and it feels like it's too big and maybe it feels too scary. How can you like break that down to feel like the next step, right? Because yeah. for example, if we want to go on a hike for three miles, we don't think about the whole time. <laughs> this is three miles, this is three miles. We just think about that next step and what that looks like and staying in that present moment so that the worry or anxiety doesn't come. Cause I used to be someone who had a lot of anxiety and worry. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was thinking too far ahead about like, well, what if, what if, what if, you know, <laughs> Yeah. and it kind of helps when you're just kind of grounded in that moment and just that next step. I love that you say that because I am, I am one and I've gotten a lot better, but I am one that will be 20 steps ahead and trying to figure out every little like control. I'm just trying to be in control when sometimes like I have to realize I don't have to be in control of the whole thing. Like you said, just, just see what you can control in that next step. It's perfect advice for somebody. <laughs> Yeah, like no, I, I'm, that's <laughs> how I am. Like, but you want to think ahead because it feels good. It's like, oh, I'd love to be there and and yeah. set that bar. But yeah. then remember the next step so that you don't feel like, well, you're always comparing between that gap instead of bridging it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, I wanted to ask you just because I'm curious and I, I think I know the answer, but I'm just curious to know. Um, I've been really, really like delving into my spiritual practice like recently with, you know, meditation and manifesting and all this stuff. So, um, do you have one of your own, like a spiritual practice or what are some things that you have like either learned or something that's like just really helped you on your healing journey in terms of spirituality? 
Yeah. Spirituality has always been big for me since I was a child. It helped me get through a lot of really difficult times. In fact, when I was at rock bottom bedridden, it was because I literally thought that like God forgot about me or I was overlooked or I had no purpose or, you know, that I wasn't good enough. And so I realized like, wow, I like gave up on myself and my connection to, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And so I um, am big on me personally, like I'm big on um, prayer and, you know, I will read the Bible. I mean, that's just me personally, but also I'll get out in nature because like, I want to cherish like this beautiful earth and like creation. So, um, I feel like as long as you find a way that connects to your spirit and the way that works for you, that that is knowing that there is something beyond you that's got your back and is there for you. And you can build that trust and connection and relationship that that is everything. Mm, I love that. And it, it really does help <clears throat> because you have to have something bigger than yourself to, to have faith, to have hope, to believe, to, you know, like, it helps me. And the reason why it helps me is because, you know, I've lost both of my parents. I've lost mm -hmm. my grandparents, a lot of family that is just no longer here. So I can often feel very alone in the world with, you know, the two people that brought me into this world. So once again, it's not lost on me that like, I have to have faith and believe that there is something bigger than me and something that is always going to have my back. Um, my spirit guides, my guardian angels, like whatever, because it's just helping me get through the next minute or day or week. <laughs> yeah, we're not meant to carry it alone. And I think if we think we are, and it's all about us and up to us. That's so much pressure, right? Oh. And that creates anxiety because it's like, whoa, I have to do all of this. Like this is too much for one human being, you know, like yeah. can't all be up to me. And so that helps also like being able to surrender, knowing like, it's not all up to you. Mm -hmm. It helps me a lot for sure. Well, it's helping my situation right now because mm -hmm. I don't know my next steps and everybody's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I'm like, well, I know this information right now. I can't go to step 20. And right now I just need to breathe. Like yeah, I'm exactly. going to get way too overwhelmed. Um, and I always remind myself, like, you can always call upon God, creator, universe, whatever it is that you want to. And like, I just have to, I know I do because I cannot handle some situations or all, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. on my own. And it's Absolutely. a huge thing. Um, okay. I want to ask you, I know we've been talking all kinds of tools, tips, and exercises, and I did this with my last guest, and I kind of like this challenge. If you are left, like your healing journey, whatever, or self-care, if you are left with, let's say, two things that you could do or that you had to do, whether they're modalities, tools, you know, journaling, meditation, yoga, exercise, nature, whatever you want to say. You only, you only have two that you can do for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, I know this is hard, but that's why it's the challenge. What, what, are, what are you going to choose and why are you choosing those? I love that. <laughs> that's a good spot. one. I love that. That's a good one. I got to think like, which one will almost cover everything? I know, um, right? <laughs> for the two, I think nature walks. Can I, is that like a nature walk? Can I say that walking in yeah. nature? That wouldn't be yep. like, num like my number one, because that gives me activity and peace and nature and fills my cup. And the second one I would say is gratitude mm. because gratitude is literally just like life changing for me. It's everything. And even today, um, it not only brings me joy in the moment, but I feel like it just continues that like abundant thought process and everything that. I'm doing. Mm, that's perfect. And my last guest, mm -hmm. nature was actually her first, um, <laughs> her first thing too. I don't remember her second, but, um, yeah, it's beautiful. And yeah. I love that. And gratitude is so big for me, you know, because, well, you know why, because there, there can be so many things that do go wrong in our lives, but once we can look, I like the challenge of finding the small things. Like I always mm -hmm. say like, what is something small that you don't even realize that you savor every day or you enjoy like every day that 
if it was gone, you would be really like bumming and you didn't. And I'm like, is that the taste of my coffee every day? Is that the cuddles with my, my puppy dog for the time that I get? Is it the 30 minute nature walks out to the park? It really does like give your life that much more like meaning and this is great because we're always looking for those big moments when it's like, but well, maybe the small moments are the big stuff. <laughs> You're right. It is the small moments and then it's the small moments and it's the savoring. So it's like mm. the double S's, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you said both of those and that's what caught my attention. It, those are both so important. Yeah. Now, something else I wanted to ask you since, I mean, you have a brand called The Power of Positivity. Have you ever struggled with, you know, you're a very authentic person, but you're like, I'm going to have this brand called The Power of Positivity. So now I'm just going to have to just always be this positive person and can't show any kind of struggle or negativity at all. So have you ever struggled with that or like, did you ever always feel safe of like, no, I, I know what I can, it can be a balance. How has that been yeah. for you? <laughs> no, absolutely. Like I even say, I think in my first book, like I'm not always a positive person, like positive Kristen is like the identity that I want to embrace all the time. Right. Because that's like my expanded self of who I want to be. And it feels like me at my core, but we are human beings. We have emotions. And so to me, it's a reminder of no matter what happens, what the power of positivity can do. And it's beyond the thinking. It's the thoughts are important and that gives you the foundation, but it's the action steps and living that positive lifestyle. And so yeah. it's kind of like your toolbox that no matter what happens, you're going to get through it because these things can soothe you and help you so that you're filling your cup up with the right kind of comfort instead of going to, you know, addictions or other things that are going to, bring comfort because you're keeping comfort from yourself, right? Like these, this, it's like, it's like positive. It's like positivity is like there for us. And it's like connected to everything. It's like, it, we just have to choose that perspective. So no, I'm not like always positive. Like I lost my grandma a few years ago and I let that grief sit in because that's a reflection of how deeply I loved her mm. and how important she was to me. And I was even writing my book. I dedicated my book to her. Mm. And of course I'm allowed to cry and feel that because I'm a human being and I loved her very much. And that's just that reflection. And yep. even once in a while, it'll like creep up on me. But what I do is I feel that. And then I choose like, well, what's something that what's a soothing thing that grandma brought you or, you know, a good memory that you can focus on and then move from that. It's like there for you to move through things, not like um, to just it's not about perfection. Right. Yeah, you are so right. And, you know, like when I created my podcast, The Bright Side of Life name, it's because I aspired to be in a place of peace. Like my first out of the gate, my podcast was named that because I didn't want people to struggle alone, one. And two, I dreamt of being in a place that I was no longer at war on the inside of myself. I didn't hate myself for trauma that was totally out of my control. Um, a healing journey. Like there's so many different variations and it's of course evolved, like what the bright side of life means to me. But sometimes I'll think, you know, just because my podcast is called the bright side of life does not mean that I won't post things that are very real and like happening, you know, like my car being stolen or things that really happen. Because if I do that, just much like yours, and we just preach positivity and bright side of life all the time. Nobody once again is ever going to be able to resonate with like what, what we are saying, you know, which is it, it's a, it's a flow to get there. It's not like you must be here all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. And everyone's at different stages and, yeah. you know, and going through different things. But the reminder is so like people appreciate that reminder because they're like, okay, you're right. This kind of sucks, but I can think this way or feel this way in this moment. I have that choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
that's why we have different types of posts depending on where people are, because you want to meet them at their emotion, but you don't want to sit there with them the whole time. You're like, okay, now we can get out, you know, because (laughs) that's how I ended up, you know, in bed for two weeks. And I know that that's not where we want to be. We want to get out of that place. Yeah, that is so true. And I, your posts, they are, they're, they're incredible. There was one, I wish I would have wrote it down, but it, it really like just helped me even just seeing it today. It was about, you said something about looking at the, the worst case scenario for, but that brings on like stress and anxiety. And you said, but why not look at the best case scenario to bring you peace? And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> and I'm like, this, this is it. Oh, I love that you love that. Some people get triggered by it, but I mean, society is always telling us that worst case scenario. And I understand that that's for really like survival, right? We mm-hmm. like need yeah. like to know what the worst case scenario could right. be to survive, but we don't want to live in survival mode. So no. why don't we think about what the best case scenario could be and give us, give us, our, give ourselves a chance, right? Yeah. And there's a, there's a caveat to, to everything, you know, if you're going to, make a post, it might make a bold statement. And that's not to say it's the statement of the century and it's 100% everybody must feel this way or it's, it's applied to everybody. That's not what that means, but it definitely spoke to me because that's what I need to remember right now. So thank you for that. (laughs) And even if you think about both, right, you're like, okay, here's, all the things that could happen. And so, but I'm going to go back to peace right now because it's good for my nervous system. Like I'm like all about, um, nervous system regulation. Uh, yes. So am I. That's like why I'm, I'm, I mean, I figured out through, you know, doing therapy, you know, and being in debilitating anxiety for 10 years after my mom died, that my nervous system was probably like a wreck. I'm surprised that I'm knock on wood, like not more sick than I am. Hopefully I'm not, but every day that I'm getting older, I can't risk that anymore. I need to start Mm. combating anything or just preventing it, you know? So totally. That's why, (laughs) that's why I try to do all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. It does make a difference. It really does. Um, I want to ask you, I'm scared to ask this question, but then again, I'm not. Have you ever had any issues with like, uh, like toxic positivity or has anybody ever blamed you like for that or any issues around toxic positivity or what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. I mean, people have mentioned it, but I don't believe in just stuffing our emotions down and ignoring them. That part of the healing journey is that we need to get them out of there because when they're stored in the body, they create disease. And so there's all kinds of amazing books that talk about that, but we want to go in there and get them out and then find where we want to move from that place, as I mentioned before. And so toxic positivity is kind of just ignoring your feelings And that is not what I'm about. Mm -mm. But I think choosing the positive perspective or the potential for that is so important to to our health and research backs that up. So moving through is really just the importance that we don't talk about enough. And that's really the power of positivity is having those lifestyle habits that can move those emotions through. Yep. Yep. You are so spot on. And that's so true because, you know, a- anybody reading your, your posts or whatever, they're all on a different, in a different place. You know, one, one post might be triggering for somebody where somebody else might completely understand it because maybe that one person hasn't been on a healing journey, aren't going through their emotions, exactly. <laughs> stuffing it down. So yeah, I, I was just curious about all of that. Um, all right. I know you just came out or not just, but a couple of years ago, you came out with your positivity journal. So I just want you to talk about that for a little bit. Um, yeah. Where, where can people find that book too? If, if they want to start, you know, a gratitude practice or positivity practice. Yeah. Three minute positivity journal. I had no expectations on that. And 
It's amazing because it got into the, I think it was like 53 on the Amazon charts of all books. I was like, just oh completely gosh. like, ama right. Yeah. It's like, so it's like 50 page self-help book. And then the rest is a 60 day journal entries and there's morning and evening. So morning intentions and evening reflections and literally each page. I really put a lot of time and I even literally timed it. It really does take three minutes. And so I try to jam pack it with all the things that can really set you up for a good day mm -hmm. and then end your day in the right way. And so we have gratitude in there. We have, um, you know, mental health check. So you can, mm -hmm. it's my dog. <laughs> okay. Have, I have mine over here too. <laughs> yeah. He's like, mom, sorry. It's okay. Uh, scratching. I don't know if you'll get that background noise. So we have mental health check because it's important to, again, like I said, check in with how you're feeling, but then maybe how you want to feel for the day. Mm. And, um, you know, gratitude. I have a positivity prompt in there that can sometimes get your mind thinking or put you into action. Like, hey, do a random act of kindness today. I have a quote in there, um, a priority list, because I'm all about like, doing the things that you want to do and say you're going to do and then doing them. So at the end of the day, you might put your wins of what you said you were going to do. Did you do it? You know, um, because oftentimes we have good intentions, but then we never do the things that we really wanted to do or said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And then also there's a self-care check. So are you taking care of yourself? And so you don't have to do all of them in one day, but yeah. whatever is important to you that day, like, um, you know, spiritual, um, emotional, physical, there's all kinds of great ideas on there. And you can kind of just check the box to what you intend to do or do. So it's just important to kind of set ourselves up in this way to know we're getting that positive energy moving. Because in my community, um, everyone was all on board for the positive thinking. And but they were saying, you know, I'm not seeing the actions or really being able to be accountable for the actions. Mm. And so I wanted to help them in that way to keep them accountable for the action steps that they want to take. Yeah, I love that. I feel like that's where I struggle the most is the, the action steps are where I probably struggle the most. Like I can get a lot of crap done, but it's like not in an organized fashion. And I'm like, I, I got to, do something with this. And I'm really looking up like smart goals, you know, to, to like, I, I don't know. It's just been sporadic. Like I can achieve a lot of stuff, but then it's like, okay, but is there a reason why you even achieve that to get you to the next place you want to be? And so that's what I'm really going to start focusing on is intentional action goals that get me to where I want to be for a certain reason. Yeah. I think too, when we write it down, we're like, oh, wow, I did do that. And then we can kind of celebrate ourselves at the end of the day, because oftentimes we might not feel like we've done enough mm -hmm. or, Hey, what did we do? Like, or, um, like, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes things can happen to where we are too hard on ourselves. Yes. But when we see that these, look at these small action steps that we've done all day that, you know, it kind of builds more self-esteem when we yeah. realize like, Hey, we did do this because we're really our biggest cheerleaders. Yep. And even if other people compliment us, sometimes we don't even like take in that compliment, right? Because we're like in our own head about like, well, no, you don't understand. I set the bar here and I didn't, you know? Yep. And so when we take the time and do these things, it just really makes us feel good. But then it, gives us that step-by-step -step plan that we literally get to where we want to go. Yeah. And I love that you, you physically are marking it off to just be like, I did that. It's like the little gold star. <laughs> yeah. We need those still as an adult, we right? We do. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kristen, before we go, I have one last question for you, but is there anything else that you would like to cover or you would like to talk about um, that we haven't maybe discussed that, you know, is important on you and on your heart. Um, you, we can definitely talk about that. I think we've had a great conversation. Like it was flowing great. Yeah, it was. Well, thank you, um, so much. And really quickly, I know we just talked about your journal, but your, your book right now, tell people where they can find that and what the name of it is again. 
my website, positivekristen.com. I just launched a new website, so you can go on there. Um, I actually have a quiz on there to see if they are in their comfort zone, and if not, how to get there. The book is on there. I've got the journal. I've got all kinds of things. My socials are all on there. So that Perfect. should be the best place to go. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right, Kristen, I ask all of my guests this. In your own words, what does the bright side of life mean to you? Wow. I love that. I think <laughs> looking at life with a grateful lens and knowing that there's so many beautiful things here and opportunities for us, if we can just open our eyes and see that bright side. Mm, I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing and thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. This has been an absolute pleasure. Um, and I encourage everybody to go get her comfort zone book. I, I can't wait to read it. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yes.